the people who dream and those people who dream big have a different kind of life than the people who don't dream. And most people are just satisfied with ad. There's always a next level. Your definition of greatness and what you want to achieve could be totally different than somebody else's. You know, we always say, no one wants to be first, okay, because they're afraid of the consequences that come with doing something first. If you're not getting the results you want from your dream, then examine your motivation. Give yourself something to work towards constantly. Take charge of your emotions. Don't let someone else choose them for you. If you're not gonna do everything that is necessary to get where you wanna be in your life, why even bother? Sounds harsh, doesn't it? Makes you wonder why am I saying exactly what I just said. Because the time is now for you to recognize that there is no time to be feeling pity about your discussions and what it is that you have inside yourself. You have got to have a different type of conversation within yourself and stop doing the word can't and stop doing the word try. Dreams will remind you that even if the situation isn't temporary, dreams still give you a purpose to live a bigger life despite what you're dealing with. Because they will help you move through the chapter of the life that you're in more powerfully, more grounded, and more fulfilled. Now believing in yourself is simply an attitude. Believing in yourself is a choice. You have to choose to believe that you can do anything you set your mind to, anything at all because in fact you can. Those who succeed don't believe in limits. They study until they understand. They don't give up when they experience doubt. They don't give up when it's hard. They do not give up full stop. They keep working hard even if they've been rejected. They keep at it. They keep searching for new opportunities. That's exactly how you have to be. Life is hard and you'll never get far if you limit yourself in anything you do. Stop wasting your time making excuses and blaming other people. You need to set goals and pursue them, but you gotta set goals and create pressure and get some support until you get there. And the worst thing you can do is let yourself off the hook. And that's what excuses do. You let yourself off the hook when you set a goal, when you have a dream, when you have a vision. Don't you ever let yourself off the hook start now. Start believing, start dreaming, and create the life and the person that you really want to see. Most people go through life never discovering what their talents are. Most people never develop their talents. They have skills and abilities, but if you don't nurture them, if you don't develop them, they will never serve you. Your gifts can take you many places if you develop your gifts. Most of us don't like to do those things that come easy to us. I've always loved to talk to people. I decided taking this advice to develop my skills as a speaker. And my gift has developed and it developed and has taken me many places. You have something that you brought to the universe. And that if you decide that my life deserves my developing this what I do well and becoming the best at it and mastering myself and seeing what I have within me. If you decide to drop your buckets where you are and develop your gifts, I grant you, you'll never ever be without. I grant you that your gifts will take you places that will literally amaze you. I grant you that if you begin to work to develop your gifts, You'll develop a strong sense of happiness. You'll get a larger vision of yourself because part of beginning to get a larger vision of yourself, all of us need some area of our lives where we can have a feeling of competence. That people know when they think about this area, that's something you do. That you eat and sleep that. And that you do that. You do that. And people know it. And you know it, and you know that you know that you know this. If you don't know anything else, you know this. Can you tell I know I know what I'm doing? Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> you know this. So you've got to work on it. 
When other folk are having a good time, you've got to have the, the strength of character to concentrate, to read, to digest information. If you decide in any particular area that you're concerned about to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to read one book a month in that area, in five years, you'll be among the top 5% experts in the world. I read a minimum of two books a week. The average American reads only one book a year. If you decide that area that you love, that you are going to master that particular area, in this era of accelerated change, overwhelming complexity and tremendous competition, as you begin to develop and expand your skills and your talents and your vision of yourself, you will always be in control of your destiny. It is in the nature of things that some people will be more successful and happier than others. Some people will make more money, have better lives, enjoy greater fulfillment and satisfaction, have happier relationships and contribute more to their communities. Others will not. The most important single quality that you can develop in a time of rapid change is the quality of flexibility. The opposite of flexible thinking is fixed or mechanical thinking. The opposite of approaching life with an open mind is to react automatically and predictably in every situation. The opposite of flexibility is an unwillingness to change in the face of new information or circumstances. The quality of flexibility is therefore essential if you want to be, do and have more than the average person. Today, perhaps the most important factor affecting your life is the speed of change. We are living in an age where change is taking place at a faster rate than ever before in human history. And if anything, the rate of change is increasing, year by year. Change today is not only faster, but it is also discontinuous, not following a straight line, but starting, stopping and going off in unpredictable direction. Change is coming at us from all sides in so many different ways that it is often impossible to anticipate what might happen. By its very nature, change is unpredictable, often forcing us to scrap our very best plans and ideas overnight as the result of a completely new and unexpected development coming from a new and unexpected direction. As a result, we have to remain flexible in our thinking and in our possible courses of action. You must learn to say to remain flexible is, I made a mistake. It is amazing how much time, energy and money is wasted because someone's ego is so large that they will not admit they have made a mistake, even one that is obvious to everyone around them. Once you say, I was wrong or I made a mistake, the issue is largely over. From then on, everybody can get on with resolving the problem or achieving the goal. But as long as a key person is unwilling to admit that he or she has taken the wrong course, everything comes to a stop. We have seen this repeatedly in national politics where the failure of a single person to admit a mistake or blunder has led to tremendous waste of time and energy for everyone involved, and often for the entire nation. Here is the most important rule of flexibility. Be clear about your goal, but be flexible about the process of achieving it. Always be open to the influence of your superconscious mind. Remain sensitive to the possibility of serendipitous and synchronous events. Be open to ideas, inspirations, and input from other people. In the New Testament, Jesus said, you must become like a little child if you would enter into the kingdom of heaven. One interpretation of these words is that you must remain open-minded, flexible, calm, confident, and curious if you want to be able to recognize new opportunities and possibilities as they open up around you on your journey toward your goal. Resolve to remain flexible and open no matter what happens. Remember, there is almost always a better way to accomplish any task or to achieve any goal. Your aim should be to be alert and aware to what it might be, to find it and then to take action in that new direction as quickly as possible. This will ensure that you inevitably reach your goal, sometimes in the most unexpected and surprising ways. You see, you can have anything you want in life, if you want it badly enough and are willing to pay the price. Now the rules regarding the price of success are simple. There's just two of them. Number one is you always have to pay full price for success. And number two 
is you always have to pay in advance. Now here are some key points on goals. And please remember these. The first key point is that your ability to set goals and to make plans for their accomplishment is the master skill of success. The development of this skill requires continual practice and serious personal work, something that only the top 5% will discipline themselves to do. You see, setting goals is hard. Setting goals requires delaying gratification. Setting goals means taking some time aside and sitting down and really thinking through what it is you want in each area of your life. And because this is difficult, most people won't do it. Number two, your goals must be congruent with your basic values. Your self-esteem comes from engaging in activities and working toward goals that are consistent with what you believe to be good, and right, and important. Take some time to think through what you believe in, and then structure your goals in harmony with your innermost convictions. What are your basic values in life? What would you live for? What would you fight for? What would you sacrifice for? What would you die for? What are the most important things to you in life? And are your goals, are your daily activities congruent with those values? Now, one of the things we know about high-achieving men and women is that they're very clear about what it is they believe in. And one of the things that we know about underachievers and failures is that they're very vague about what it is they believe in. Because when you know what your values are, then it's quite easy for you to make the critical decisions in your life. But if you don't know what your values are, or if you've never taken the time to think them through, then you will toss with the wind and you'll go whichever way the wind blows on almost any area of decision. Fourth point in goal setting, you must have a major definite purpose. One goal that is more important than any other. You can have many different goals, but you must have one goal, which is number one. And many people ask me this question. They say, fine, well, can I have two major definite purposes? And the answer to that is no. There's a line in the Bible that says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And what it means is if you try to do two things at once, or you have two goals with equal priority, you will end up doing neither, and doing neither of them very well. The way you choose your major definite purpose is once you've listed all your goals, you ask yourself, which is the one goal, the accomplishment of which would move me more rapidly toward the accomplishment of all my other goals than anyone on this list? 